explain what you got, man. You've got a Jericho four speed or five speed. So there's a Jer- four speed Jericho gearbox. This was from the Roush Racing NASCAR team in the states. Yeah. This has competed at like Talladega. It's done a lot of laps. Done a lot of done a lot of time. But they kept it quite maintained. Okay. The this top piece here, I selected this box. I found it second hand um, from a reseller in America. Um, basically, they've made this whole top piece that you can see is slightly different colors. Yep. They've made it and then they've actually moved the shift bars from the side to the top. The reason I selected it is because I'll be able now, with the shifter being directly in line, I can use a modifier. This was 3D printed from a mate of mine to simulate the, the new offset. These bars used to sit, this bar here in particular used to sit up here. So you can see how much I've shortened the shifter to get it to where a factory K70 or A86 will fit. Yeah. So the difference from the fra- the face of this bell housing to here is exactly that of a T50, identically. Cool. So once these bars are shortened to meet up with my linkage, and this is uh, remade in CNC, then the box will be able to fit directly into a K70 without too much tunnel modification, possibly just here, but the rest of it will fit. Yeah, it's right. In a, in a factory right length. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's quite a strong box. It has a roller bearing in the rear in the rear case. Oh, cool. So instead of a bush bearing, it's all roller. Yeah, all rollers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's uh, this thing should handle anywhere from 800 to 1,000 horsepower. I mean, they're quite a quite a sturdy box. I had the bell housing custom made, so this is all turned and uh, suited for the 4A, which is pretty cool. The input shaft size is absolutely massive. Yeah, and you were saying you tested it with the engine. You yeah. put the shaft in the um, the pilot bearing, was it? Yeah, so I've got a dummy block down here with a dummy yeah. crank mounted into it. I can actually bolt a 4A onto this. Um, I've got a bearing to suit the crankshaft for the 4A that goes onto this input shaft. Uh, it lines up, everything turns beautifully. So the bell housing's alignment is correct. The width, the, the length of it's correct. I chose alloy, uh, sorry, steel over the alloy. I had an option to go alloy, but uh, I chose steel because it's more of a scatter shield. If I have a flywheel let go, I really want to keep my legs. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to add another like a, like I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen people use like blankets, like a like a Kevlar sort of blanket. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to have to add like right now. Nah, yeah, yeah, Kevlar blanket. I mean, they're they're as good as they are safety. They're also fire risk if they get oil absorption into them yeah and you have an engine fire holy christ they go up they so really right now you don't have to worry about it because you went steel steel yeah. yeah which is quite thick like like you say it's 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 there's quite a lot of strength in the, yeah. the outside diameter of this it's like um, the armor. <laughs> yeah i've yet to drill holes in it for cooling uh okay. this is completely sealed at the moment i will be drilling a couple of holes in the top to let heat out and okay. then uh, a couple of little tiny holes in the bottom just to let any liquid out that um that might get inside there's a few modifications I have to do here on the inside. I have to change the bearing retainer off here with one that has a snout on it. Then I have to mount a, um, a, a 360 degree um, thrust bearing for the clutch. Then I'll be drilling a hole in the side for two lines to come out. Uh, I'll be using like a speed flow line with a, a bulkhead fitting. Yep. And then that'll go to my clutch slave that'll come inside to this. It'll be all hydraulic, yeah. yeah. You're going to be utilizing the flat shift feature. You're going to completely just have your foot flat on the on the floor with no clutch, and you're going to be like jamming it into gears. Yeah. So actually, uh, even yesterday, I was actually t- uh, bought a couple of components offline, um, some a strain gauge and a strain gauge amplifier. So off here, I'll be making a shift shift handle that comes up to me once it's mounted in the car, and I know where I want my shifter to sit. I'll make a bar that comes off here. Um, or I'll just get a, a long shifter, the brand long, um, yep. which will mount to here. On that shifter, I'll be putting a load cell on, um, which is uh, basically it just measures uh, the bending of a, an object, whether it be, you know, like you could put a load cell on this. If you wrapped it around this bar, as I tensioned it up, it would actually send a voltage signal to a, um, an amplifier, yep. um, a strain gauge amplifier. That would then convert the low voltage signal into a readable signal from an ECU, which then would tell me an output. So I could actually calibrate how much tension goes on that bar. It's the same way digital torque wrenches work. Yep. Um, but when it's mounted to a shifter, when you put strain on the on the shifter as it bends, it registers that I'm trying to make a shift, and then I can induce a cut into the ECU, which will then allow flat shifting without lifting the throttle. Um, and being a dog engagement gearbox, uh, you know she's she'll have you know shifts at 
0.4 seconds or less. Yeah. You said without lifting the throttle, you won't even be putting the clutch in, will you? No clutch. Yeah. Clutchless, completely clutchless shifting, uh, flat. So completely just keep your foot flat on the accelerator. And, and then as soon as you, you as soon as you pull, yeah. it will induce a shift cut, That's which so will just cool. pop and into the next gear. That's so cool. I'll actually open it up if you want to have a look inside. Oh quickly. yeah, cool, for sure. So you can see it's got straight cut gears. You can see how the dogs engage each other uh, on each other. So there's a backwards taper on the dog, which holds it in place. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll give it a shift. See if I can get this thing to shift gears because it's actually in gear at the moment. There you go. That's in neutral now. So here we can spin the gears the other way. That's the output shaft. It's input shaft spinning. So now that's engaged into what looks like top gear. So you can see the dog now engaged down here onto the backwards taper. That's the dog engaging. Yeah. So they're rattly because they. It's got a fair bit of movement. They do it, this action. Yeah. yeah. But that's how they they operate. The dogs work on a backwards taper, unlike a synchro. They're also referred to as a crash box. Um, they do make a lot of noise. They uh, are violent on their shifts, but um, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be an experience to put one of these behind a foray. Oh yeah. Uh, it will take a lot of horsepower away from the car. Oh yeah, but you're not. Um, I'm not worried you're not about too that. Too worried about that. With your setup, yeah. yeah. If it was aspirated, there's no way this this motor this gearbox would barely the car would almost not move. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. With your setup, it's going to be a monster. Yeah, it should be good. But um, yeah, it's pretty happy to get this out of America. Um, pretty happy. There's, they're quite a rare box. I can't find any details of this online. I've spoken with. Um, I tried to get in touch with the Roush, Roush Fenway Racing Team. They don't want to know about you. Yeah. So I've had to just sort of do everything on my own, sort of figure it all out. You know. Uh, I mean, there's serial numbers. There's a number here. If it was 53. The Roush Racing Team. Um, their custom top plate here, which was a part of their shifting linkage. So you can see it's Roush from Roush Racing. Um, all the little, the little things I've noticed about it um, after owning it, like the the breather is actually moved to this location versus here. So that was the original breather position, and they've moved it to here because the shift linkage has now go over the top. Yeah, it would hit, of course. Because, yeah, the shift leakage just used to be on the side. So everything you saw in the top there has basically just been moved, up, moved yeah. to the top, and then they've made this plate uh, to move all the shift linkages to where they need to be for a top shift. The reason they've done it is because they could move the driver, The in an American car you're sitting on the left, in an NASCAR, the shift linkages would have been next to your leg. So what they wanted to do was move the driver more to the center of the vehicle to change the mass of the car, to okay. try and get a bit of an edge. So they moved the shift linkage onto the top. So it's pretty interesting to see a team go to all this effort just to move the shift linkage to the top. So they can move their driver. So they can move their driver the further in, which yeah. gave them that little bit of an edge to put the weight in the center of the car rather than onto the, On the, the inside of the car, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool to see that because, um, you know, it's uh, it, it was a lot of work. You know, this was a lot of work to do. And, uh, you know, once I seen a top shifted gearbox, it was just like, beautiful, I'll get onto that. Because, um, yeah, the being a, I didn't really want to, modify my tunnel i wanted to be able to make a kit that worked into the car nowadays modern nas cars it's a feature that they all have to do they can't they don't have sides side link shifts anymore it's all uh, top shifted so the modern gearbox that you compare this to would be the um g-force gsr which is um probably 15 15 18 thousand dollars worth of gearbox brand new yeah so um this was quite a much cheaper option i think this I don't know what it owes me actually to the, to the date, but um, really cool features in the box. It's strong as hell. I won't break it. Uh, it's just my differential now that'll suffer. Once it's done, and once I have all these linkages meet where they should be, this is all CNC'd. Uh, I'll be getting these powder coated to a similar color. I'll color match it, powder coat it all up, and um, it'll look the part. Still needs a cross member of tail shaft made for it. Still need to figure out a clutch. There's a lot of work involved in this still. Yeah, yeah, I think you've done the hard part though. Yeah. yeah, getting getting the gear, getting the gearbox in the car is is going to be tricky. Yeah, but um, you know, like 
Judging off a W series box, I think this will fit with minor modification of the tunnel, if any at all. So, yeah. you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. The good thing about it is too the all the the dogs in there, the dog rings and stuff, they're all on splines. So if you damage a dog, you can just change off the spline. When if you look at like a Hollinger for a W series gearbox, some people might say oh, it's too much work, it's too crazy. But if you buy a, uh, a Hollinger kit for a W series gearbox, the dogs are integrated onto the actual shaft and the gear set. So if you chip a, a tooth on a gear set, you have to change the entire input shaft, which is, has the gear attached to it and the dog. So if you damage a dog ring, or damage a dog on the actual shaft, you have to change pretty much half the box. And Hollinger's gonna charge you five, six grand just for that option. When a, a gear set from Hollinger's 10 grand for a W Series gearbox. So it made more sense to go something like this, which has everything on splines. So I can very quickly disassemble the box, pull the extension housing up, pull the input shaft out, pull all the internals out of it and just go, sweet, I need $400 worth of components to change out what Hollinger would charge you five, five grand for. So it just seemed like a cheaper option to do something like this. So in the future, if I do damage a dog or I do damage a gear, I can just change that out. And it's very, very easily available out of America. Uh, even Australia carries stock for these things. So you can pick up dog rings and gears and there is so many options available to, to change your gear ratios or anything you want very, very cheaply for these boxes. So I chose it for one of those reasons. Cool. Yeah. We can't wait to make a video of it actually running yeah, yeah. So you jam it into gear and it's going to be awesome. See it go. Well, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm excited for it, but it's still a long way off yet. It's a long do, way, yeah. I got to build a lot more engines before I pay for this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for showing me, man. No worries.